So guess what? As it turns out, there are only three ways to really increase revenue in your restaurant. We're going to talk about all three on this week's episode of Restaurant Strategy. And we're also going to get into the nuts and bolts about how you take action, how you actually implement a plan to increase revenue in your restaurant. Tons of advice, tons of insights, very actionable on today's episode of Restaurant Strategy. Don't go anywhere. There's an old saying that goes something like this. You'll only find three kinds of people in the world. Those who see, those who will never see, and those who can see when shown. This is Restaurant Strategy, a podcast with answers for anyone who's looking. Chip Close, and this is Restaurant Strategy, a podcast dedicated solely to helping you build a more profitable restaurant. Each week, I leverage my 20 plus years in the industry to help you build that more profitable and more sustainable business. I also work directly with operators all over the world through my P3 Mastermind program. What are the three P's? They stand for profit, process, and progress. So if you've got a busy restaurant but struggle to generate consistent, predictable 20% profits month after month, then please set up a free 30-minute strategy session. We'll get to learn more about you and your restaurant. You'll get to ask some questions about the program to see if you're a good fit for the program. Visit restaurantstrategypodcast.com slash schedule. As always, you'll find that link in the show notes. Now, have you read the 2023 State of the Restaurant Industry Report from the National Restaurant Association? There's a lot to digest in that 41-page paper, but that's where you can lean on Spot On, the presenting sponsor of that report. As a top-rated restaurant technology company, Spot On leads from the front. Not only are they helping restaurant operators make sense of the changing landscape, but they're also working directly with restaurants to overcome challenges with innovative solutions. Their handhelds and QR ordering can help you turn more tables while creating a better guest experience. On the back end, their labor management tools can save up to 20 hours per week on tasks like scheduling, payroll, and tip distribution. And when it comes to rising costs, Spot On's reporting gives you the real-time data you need to make informed decisions about your menu, your employees, and your operations. Best of all, Spot On's direct online ordering puts you in control of your takeout and delivery operation without the third-party commissions. They've got all these tools in one integrated system backed by a customer support team that actually answers the phone. Learn more by visiting spoton.com slash chip, and yes, you will find that link in the show notes. Now, as I said during the cold open, there are only three ways to actually increase revenue in your restaurants. This is going to be a very short but action-packed episode. Let's get to it right off the bat. What are the three ways to increase revenue in your restaurant? They are, you can sell more of your product, you can increase the price of your product, or you can sell different products, right? So you can sell more of your product, you can uh, increase the price of your product, or you can sell a variety of products. Guess what? That's it. But let's talk about what that means for restaurants, because that's a business truism. But let's talk about what your product is, right? Because it all has to do with either, again, selling more of your product, increasing the price of your product, or selling a variety of different products. Your product is, let's say, dinner. Dinner at your restaurant is a product. Lunch at your restaurant, breakfast at your restaurant is a product. Catering, uh, uh, um, uh, in uh, private dining, right? Uh, merchandise, these are all different products, right? Which we'll get to on the third piece. But the first piece, let's start. You have to sell more of your product, right? So simply put, that's more covers, right? One way to increase revenue is just to increase the number of covers, increase the number of people that you take care of every night, right? Number two, right? How do you, you could increase the price of your product? And no, I don't mean necessarily increasing the price of your product, but you could increase the average guest spend. Meaning if the average guest comes in and spends $44 on dinner at your restaurant, you could easily work with your service team uh, through training, et cetera, to uh, get more items on that check to help inflate the guest check average so that the check average goes from 44 to 49 or 44 to 54. There are ways to increase uh, what that what you generate, what kind of revenue you generate with that product, that dinner product. 
Or then the third piece, right, is that instead of just selling dinner, you could sell lunch, you could sell breakfast, you could sell private dining, you can sell off-site catering, you could sell merchandise, you could sell at-home meal kits, you can sell a variety of different things. One of the things that I say a lot of times when I'll uh, when I'll give talks, like keynote speeches at expos, convention centers, uh, things like that, different trade shows, uh, I'll often say, you know, let's show of hands, how many restaurant owners are in the room, right? And we got a whole bunch of hands. Ninety percent of the room are restaurant owners. And I said, no, put your uh, put your hands down. For the next at least forty five minutes, at least while I'm up here on stage, you are not restaurant owners. You are business owners. You run a business, and a business owner thinks differently than a restaurant owner. A restaurant owner falls into the trap of doing the things that they know how to do, and they just do that over and over and over again. Uh, but as my colleague Josh Kopel said uh, when he was on this podcast, he said, you know, very rarely do we actually know how to run a successful business. That's because I learned it from some asshole who learned it from some asshole who learned it from some asshole. I'm paraphrasing. That's generally what Josh Kopel said when he was a guest here on this show. He's a very smart guy. I, I like uh, what he says very much, and I, and I believe that is true. We learned from a lot of people who didn't necessarily know what they were doing, and they learned from people who didn't necessarily know what they were doing. And now the markets are so saturated, things are so expensive, right? Cost of food, the cost of labor, the cost of rent is so expensive that we can't afford to not understand how to do what we do profitably. And we can't afford to not know what we're doing, right? So as we talk about this, as we talk about increasing revenue, and the reason I bring this up is because I talk to a lot of restaurant owners who tell me, hey, it's a straight, that they, they say, oh, you know, the number of people, I talk to at least two people, three people a week who say, well, you know, I'm a big fan, you know, I'm a subscriber to the revenue cures all sins mentality. And I got to tell you, that works some of the time, but maybe 10 or 15% of the clients that I work with actually need more revenue, right? Meaning they are at a below a break even or just at a break even point to run their operation profitably. And so, yes, they just need more revenue. But I got to tell you, the majority of the time, it's not the revenue that's the problem. It is actually, actually the expenses. And it's uh, the fact that they don't have a, a solid system for forecasting and budgeting. That's a big part of why people come to work with me in the P3 Mastermind. Because that's something we show. I give you a simple framework and a system to implement in your restaurant. So, no, it's not always a revenue problem. And revenue does not necessarily cure all sins. I've looked at enough P&Ls uh, to be able to tell you that that is not necessarily true. In fact, very infrequently it's true. But there are times when we just need to make a straight revenue play, as I like to say, that we just need to generate more revenue. So as we talk about this, I want you to first step back and really get a clear understanding of what your break-even point is. Make sure you understand, I always talk about the 30-30-20 rule, right? That all of your expenses should go into one of three buckets. Cogs roughly should be at 30%, labor should be at roughly 30%, and then everything else, everything else you spend money on should be in that third bucket, and that should roughly come to 20%. Now, some combination of those three numbers should add up to about 80. If you're not making, I'll say 15 to 20% profit margin every single month, I'm sorry, I just don't understand why we work so hard to make five, six, eight percent, eleven percent. Unless you're telling me, hey, I run a fifteen million dollar restaurant and eight percent of fifteen million is a pretty good living, and, and then I'll give you that. I got you. I've certainly worked for places that were 10, 15, 20 million dollar properties. They generated a significant amount of revenue every single year. And so yeah, maybe 10% is the promised line. We don't need to make any more. But I gotta tell you, for most of the people that I talk with, for most of the independent operators in this country who make one, two, three million dollars a year in their restaurant, I'm sorry, you need to be doing it more profitably. If you make a million dollars, the fact that you generate enough profit to pay you 80,000 or 100,000 dollars a year, I just think you should be doing you should be doing better than that. I've said a lot of times, right? Restaurant owners, I believe, deserve a restaurant that works as hard as they do. I know restaurant owners out there understand what it means to work hard, but I want to show you how to work smarter so that you can get your business to work hard for you because I believe 15 to 20% is where we should be targeting. All the chains, all the, all the big chains that we see all the time target 20 to 24%. Uh, a, a lot of uh, franchises target 22 to 27% before they franchise because they understand that with the royalties and the marketing dollars and all of that, it ends up being less than that. 
Why we would target anything less than about 15 or 20 percent is beyond me. So if you've thought that, you know, 10 percent was the land of unicorns and fairies and I'll never even get there, I'm here to tell you it's absolutely possible. So the first thing you need to do when you look at your business is to really understand where your break even point is. And I think it's probably lower than you think it is. And then make sure you understand how to be profitable every single month, how to build a business, how to build a budget that will guarantee you 20% every single month. That's the first step. But then let's say, let's say it is just a straight revenue play, which it undoubtedly is for some of the listeners listening to this. There are only three ways to increase revenue. You can sell more of your product, you can increase the price of your product, or you can sell a variety of products. That's what I want to dig in on the second half of this episode. Like I said, this is going to be a shorty one. But first, a word from another one of our sponsors. Now, Today's episode of Restaurant Strategy is also brought to you by Seven Shifts. Seven Shifts is a team management platform built specifically for restaurants. Great restaurants are built by great teams. We know that. And Seven Shifts is your secret weapon to better understand your restaurant, to hit labor targets, and keep your entire team connected. With drag-and-drop scheduling, in-app communication, task management, tip management, and more, it makes restaurant work a whole lot easier. From back of house to front of house, managers, franchise owners, and even larger corporate teams, Seven Shifts has benefits at every single level. Plus, it integrates with the other systems your restaurant already uses, like POS and payroll. Turn your team into your competitive advantage. Restaurant Strategy Podcast listeners get three months absolutely free. To get started, visit sevenshifts.com slash restaurant strategy. That's the number seven, S-H-I-F-T-S dot com slash restaurant strategy to get three months free and join over 30,000 restaurants using Seven Shifts today. As always, you will find that link in the show notes. Now, we're talking all about how you increase revenue. I'll remind you only three ways to do it. You can sell more of your product, you can increase the price of your product, or you can sell a variety of different products. Let's be really clear on what we mean by a product. A product is an experience. Dinner at your restaurant is a product. People can come in and get lunch product and also come in and get the dinner product. Right? And they don't compete with each other. You can come in, get lunch, go do the rest of your work, and then come back and come for, for dinner. You can come to lunch, uh, get your lunch on a Tuesday afternoon, and come bring the family for dinner on Saturday night. These are two different products. So when we talk about increasing revenue, make sure we understand your product lines. Lunch is a product. Dinner is a product. Merchandise is a product. Private dining is a different product. Off-site catering is a different product product. You can have a variety of different products. And we've talked about this. Certainly, if you go back years ago, back in the heart of the pandemic, I spent a lot of time talking about diversifying revenue streams. And I think it's one of the reasons why we got dinged as an industry, because we did things one way. I make my money, for example, as a restaurant when people come in and dine in my restaurant. And one of the things that we saw over the course of the pandemic is that takeout and delivery exploded. Because why? Because they couldn't come into the restaurant. So the only way to serve them, the only product we could serve them was takeout and delivery. So we couldn't serve the regular product. We had to serve a different product. If there's anything we've learned over the course of the pandemic and in the years since, it's that we have to diversify our revenue streams. And again, this goes back to thinking of yourself as a business owner, not necessarily necessarily as a restaurant owner. A business owner looks at their business and all of the assets they have and figures out how to exploit those assets. How can we make sure that we make as much as possible? How can we maximize our output, be as efficient as possible with our rent, with our utilities, with our people, right? We've got our people coming in. How can we best utilize them to generate as much revenue as possible? Because if we can get those people to generate as much revenue as possible, we will be more profitable. This is the way factory thinks. I've said this a lot, certainly over the last year, that I think what we do in the restaurant industry is a lot closer to what a factory does than we would like to believe. We bring in raw materials, we do something to those raw materials, and we uh, pump out a finished product. That is a restaurant. We bring in uncooked uh, food, we cook that food, and then we send that food out. And we provide an experience around that food. So again, let's be really clear. We're not selling food, we are selling an experience. Dinner in our restaurant is an experience. It is a product we sell. Just like takeout and delivery is another kind of product. Somebody who comes in and wants us to serve them, right, to, to, uh, to take care of everything for them while they're in the restaurant is looking for a different kind of product, 
a different solution to a different problem than somebody who orders takeout and delivery. So let's be really, really clear. Now, I promised that we would make things very actionable, that I'd provide some insights. Hopefully I've done that. But how do we make things actionable? First things first, you need to understand your baseline. You have to understand about how many people a day do you have coming in for lunch or how many people a week come in for lunch and how many people do you have coming in for dinner, let's say in a week. And then what sort of revenue is generated from that number of covers? In order to figure out how we can grow it, we need to understand where we are now. And I will tell you, this is where a lot of restaurant owners fail right out of the gate. They stumble right out of the gate because they can't tell me how many covers they have and how, many, uh, how much revenue is generated from those covers. So if you want to talk to me about growing something, we have to talk about where we're starting. Because if we don't know where we're starting, I don't know when more is more. And neither do you. So you have to say, hey, we do about 1,000 covers a week for lunch uh, at about $40 a head for lunch. So 40 times 1,000 people, that's about 40,000 a week in uh, lunchtime revenue. That gives us a place to start. If you do 1,000 covers at $40 a head, that gives us somewhere to start. Likewise for dinner, you got to come up with the same numbers. If you don't know those numbers, we can't even begin this conversation of growing because we have to understand where we are. So much of the work I do, for example, in the P3 Mastermind with the members of that group is about uh, proper goal setting and, and about uh, systematizing things, right? I, I say it's all about systems and goals. You got to figure out where you are and where you want to be, right? And then you got to put a system in place to get you from point A to point B, right? A system is just a repeatable set of actions. We are going to do the following things each and every day or every single week in order to achieve the following goal to get us from point A to point B. If you are not, if you don't understand where point A is and you're not, then you can't po uh, possibly, you can't possibly identify a point B to get to. And so how can you possibly put a plan in place? In order to get more dinner covers, let's say, or to generate more revenue, right, at dinner, you have to understand how many covers you do at about how much ahead. Because you have to figure out, well, there are ways that we can increase the number of covers, great. What are we going to do to increase those covers? What's, are we going to run Facebook ads? Are we going to do direct mailers? Are we going to increase the cadence of our emails? Are we going to start an SMS strategy? Are we going to work with concierges in the area? What are we going to do to increase the number of covers? Again, from point A to point B, we do about a thousand, let's say a thousand dinner covers a week in our restaurant. How can we take that to 1,200 or 1,300 or 1,400? This is now proper goal setting. You have to come up with a specific number that you want to get to. So let's say, hey, we want to increase uh, covers, the number of covers, by 20% over the next quarter or over the next six months. Great. That gives us somewhere to go to. We want to get from 1,000 covers a week on average to 1,200 covers a week on average. Now we understand where we are and where we want to go. Now we can put a plan into place for how to do it. We're going to roll out a concierge program. We're going to send out a series of direct mailers to the zip codes around us. We are going to establish a series or start running a series of Facebook ads, right? A series of different campaigns. There are different things you can do, and those are just a couple of examples. You guys come up with all kinds of whatever examples you want, but you have to understand where you are and where you're going. Same thing for lunch, same thing for anything. You've got to figure out how you're going to increase the number of products you sell. Then we go down to you can increase the price of your product. And for us, it isn't necessarily, maybe part of it is increasing the price of our product, but it, it isn't necessarily, necessarily reliant on increasing the price of our product. What we can do is increase the average guest spend. On average, when a guest comes in for dinner, they spend about $55 per head. Now, what does that mean? That means an appetizer, an entree, and a drink. Well, then we can figure out how to get a second drink on e e for each guest. We can figure out how to get a dessert on the table, how to get a side dish on the table. Increasing the check average is very, very easy. There are key points throughout the meal, and I'm not going to waste time here because I've covered it before, and undoubtedly I will cover it again, but that's not what this is about. There are ways that you can train your servers or your bartenders or your managers to help increase the average guest spend. Again, focusing on table maintenance so we get that second beverage sale. I'm not talking about over-serving here, but I'm saying people order one drink. Let's help them. Let's make it easy for them to get a second drink if they want it. Most times, people do want it. They just can't find us. They can't find the server or the server's not there anticipating the guest's needs, right? So what are the different ways we can increase the average guest spend? 
Second beverage sales is a great one. The key to doing that is through table maintenance, clearing away dead glassware and offering up uh, a new drink every time we clear that glassware. You will uh, just, just by doing that, sell more second drinks. You could try to get side dishes on the table, get appetizers for the table, get an additional appetizer uh, on, on the check. You can get, uh, again, side dishes, desserts, after dinner drinks, coffees. All of these way, all of these are ways that you can add incremental sales to the check. That's how we increase the average guest spend. So the average guest who comes in here for lunch or comes in for dinner or who hosts an event with us or does off-site catering, there are ways to increase the number that they spend on average. That is one key way to increase revenue. And then finally, the third piece is to sell different products. The easiest product to sell and to make a, the biggest bang for your buck is private dining and off-site catering. Now, this is what a lot of people have discovered, especially since the pandemic and, and since coming out of the pandemic. But this has been the same for the last 20 years. Certainly, I've been in New York for 20 years. Uh, this has been this has been true. The number one way, rather than getting another deuce in the in the uh, you know in in the dining room, you can get a 20-person party or a 40-person party. You will make more money, right? Fifty-five dollars or, or eighty-five dollars, because oftentimes private dining uh, is a higher guest spend. So instead of two people at fifty-five dollars a head, you can get twenty people at maybe seventy-five dollars a head. It is in your best interest to find more profitable products, products where you can make money in bunches and groups. That's another key way to increase the revenue in your restaurant. I would look at diversifying your revenue streams and figuring out what are all the day parts, right? So breakfast, lunch, happy hour, dinner, late night, all of those are different products and it caters to different people at different times throughout the day. Like I said, private dining, off-site catering, takeout and delivery, merchandise, uh, uh, at-home meal kits, right? Uh, uh, cooking classes, things that you can, you know, education component. Not saying you want to do any of those or all of those, but maybe you can do some of those. So if you're trying to generate more revenue, this is a couple of easy ways to do it. So you can get more people in the room, you can get those people to spend more money, or you can get them to spend money on different products. If they're used to coming to you for dinner, maybe you can find ways to also uh, take care of them at home through at-home meal kits or takeout and delivery. Maybe they haven't thought of you before for that, but you can make a push for that. You'll be serving them on different days at times where they don't typically think of you, but you can get them to think about you. It's super important that when we talk about this, we understand where we are and where we wanna go, and that you put a system in place for each of those areas for increasing it. There's, there's something systematic about what I'm, what I'm inviting you to do. This is something we do in the P3 Mastermind all the time. It's about understanding where we are, where we want to go. So that's it, only three ways to increase revenue in your restaurant. If your issue is just a straight revenue play, that's where you start. If you wanna talk further about it, then I urge you to get in touch, set up a free 30-minute strategy session with me. Visit restaurantstrategypodcast.com slash schedule. We can talk about the P3 Mastermind, we can talk about you and your restaurant, see if you're a good fit and see if we can't solve some of the problems that you might have. I know there are a lot of great restaurant podcasts that you can be listening to, and I sure do appreciate you tuning in every single week to listen to this one. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.